Welcome to Statics. Solving equilibrium problems in two dimensions. I will discuss the strategy for problem solving in the context of an example problem. As with most equilibrium problems, the best place to start is with a correct free body diagram of the rigid body. Even when you don't know how you are going to solve a problem, drawing a free body diagram is a great way to start. It will help you to understand the problem and what given information you have that can help you find the information you need. After we have a free body diagram, we are going to consider the equations of equilibrium that are available. For two-dimensional problems, we have three equilibrium equations and can therefore solve for up to three unknowns. Usually, we will be summing moments in one spot and summing forces in the x and y directions. Alternatively, we may decide to sum moments in more than one location and only use the sum of the forces in the x or the y direction. Once we have sorted out what equations of equilibrium are available to us, we look carefully at our problem to see if we can write an equation of equilibrium that has only a single unknown. If so, we solve it first, then move on to the other equations. If not, we will write out our equations and solve them simultaneously. Let's use this approach in an example. We have a member consisting of horizontal element AB and vertical element BCD. There is an applied triangular distributed load from A to B with a maximum value of 5 kN per meter at point A. There is an applied concentrated moment at point B and a concentrated force at point C. I want to find the support reactions for the pin support at point A and the cable support at point D. I will begin this problem with a free body diagram. Here is a free body diagram where I have completely removed the structure from its supports. At point A, the pin is replaced by a horizontal reaction force A sub X and a vertical reaction force A sub Y. The cable support at point D is replaced by a single tension force drawn in the direction of the cable. I will simplify this problem in one more step by converting the linearly distributed load to a resultant force acting at one-third the distance of element AB from point A. Next, I will consider what equilibrium equations I have to use, and at what point it makes the most sense to sum moments. Note that there are three unknowns, AX, AY, and RD. I will need three equations of equilibrium to find them. Let me list out the possible equilibrium equations. I can sum forces in the X direction to zero. Looking at my free body diagram, I see that I have AX and the horizontal component of RD as unknown variables in the equation. I can also sum forces in the Y direction to zero. Again, I will have two unknowns in the equation, AY and the vertical component of RD. Now I will consider good points to sum moments to zero. Remember that I can sum moments to zero anywhere I want. But I can be strategic about it and possibly find a point that will minimize the unknown variables. If I sum moments to zero about point B, there will be two unknowns in my equation, AY and the horizontal component of RD. Note that AX will not be in the equation because the line of action of AX passes through point B. The same is true for the vertical component of RD. If I sum moments to zero about point D, the line of action of RD passes through the point and will not be in the equation, but both AX and AY will be. So again, two unknown variables. If I sum moments to zero about point C, I will have three unknown variables, AX, AY, and the horizontal component of RD. The line of action of the vertical component of RD passes through point C and is not included. Let's consider one more option summing moments to zero about point A. If I sum moments about point A, then AX and AY are not included in the equation. The vertical and horizontal components of RD will be, but they are related by the angle theta, so really it is just one unknown, R sub D. Our best strategy here is to start with the equilibrium equation with just one unknown then move on to two more of our equations until we have all of our reactions. So I will start here. Sum moments to zero about point A to find reaction RD. Summing moments about point A 
we include the 2.25 kilonewton resultant force times its moment arm from A, 0 0.3 meters. It is negative by the right-hand rule. We also include the 3 kilonewton concentrated force times its offset from A, also 0 0.3 meters. It is negative by the right-hand rule. Next, I include the concentrated moment at point B. It is 4 kilonewton meters in the negative direction. Notice that there is no moment arm for the concentrated moment. This sometimes is confusing to students. It is a free couple moment, and its location on the structure does not matter here. Note that the units on every term in our equation are moment units, kilonewton meters. The concentrated moment is already in these units. Trying to multiply it by a distance would make inconsistent units in the equation. Next, I include the horizontal component of Rd times its moment arm, 0 0.6 meters. It is in the positive direction by the right-hand rule. And last, I include the vertical component of Rd times its moment arm, 0 0.9 meters. It is also positive. I set it all equal to zero and solve for the unknown, Rd. It is positive 5.37 kilonewtons. Note that the positive sign on the value means that my Rd arrow is drawn in the correct direction in my free body diagram. Now that I have reaction Rd, I go back to my equations of equilibrium and select the next best one. If I now sum forces in the x direction or in the y direction, there will be only a single unknown in the equations. So I will choose these. Note that summing moments about point B is an alternative to summing forces to zero in the y direction. Summing forces in the x direction to zero gives positive AX plus three kilonewtons minus the horizontal component of RD equals zero. Solving for AX I get positive 1.11 kilonewtons, meaning it is pointing to the right as shown in the free body diagram. Summing forces in the y direction to zero gives positive AY minus 2.25 kilonewtons plus the vertical component of RD equal to zero. Solving for AY, I get negative 1.20 kilonewtons. The negative value on AY means that it is acting in the direction opposite of the way it is drawn in the free body diagram. So AY is pointing downward. We have now completed the problem by finding all of the support reaction forces. However, I have added one more optional step to our procedure. It is to verify that I have not made a mistake. I can check my answers by using one of my leftover equilibrium equations. This step is only for serious students, those who don't want errors in their work. I can check my results by summing moments about point C, since that one has all of the reactions in it. Really, I can use any of these unused equilibrium equations to verify my results. Summing moments about point C, I get positive AX, 1.11 kilonewtons, times its moment arm, 0 0.3 meters, plus AY, 1.20 kilonewtons, times its moment arm, 0 0.9 meters, plus 2.25 kilonewtons times 0 0.6 meters, minus the concentrated moment for kilonewton meters, minus the horizontal component of Rd times its moment r, 0 0.3 meters. Doing the math gives an answer of 0, which verifies that the resultant forces I found are correct. If the answer had not been 0, then the member is not in static equilibrium, meaning I have an error somewhere. I recommend checking your results, especially in an exam scenario. Here is a summary of our answers, with the support reactions shown in yellow. This body is in static equilibrium. This procedure can be used for all two-dimensional equilibrium problems.